lettuce and succulent growers Italy in. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about how you can grow and care for Hawarthia truncata, also known as the horse's teeth succulent. Now this is a video request from two of my uh, wonderful subscribers. The first one is Heidi and Fredson and also Mr Cactus Channel. They've both got um, this Hawarthia truncata, horse's teeth uh, Hawarthia and they wanted to, to know if I could do a bit of a video about it, about how to care for it. Now I did mention to them that I was going to repot this which it does need repotting because it's sort of touching the sides but the soil is still a little bit damp so I'm going to hold back on repotting just for another week or so until the soil has dried out but I'll share repotting on this awesome Hawarthia when I do and I'm also going to share about the right soil in this video so first of all a little bit about this awesome Hawarthia now this is a Hawarthia, as all Hawarthias are, a native to South Africa and the word truncata means it almost looks like imagine you have a cake and it's cut up into little pieces and also the nickname of the horse's teeth because the the way the um the segments are are on this Hawarthia looks very much like horse's teeth or so they say it's not a plant that grows very large so it's great if you don't have much space on your windowsill and it's sort of got gorgeous um gorgeous markings on it as well it's very beautiful now I have a lot of different Hawarthia in my collection. I have them all in the polyton. I'm just going to show you the other ones I've got in my collection. Now here is some of my other Hawarthias that I have here in my um, my larger big green polyton or many different varieties there. Do very well for me here and I've got them sort of a little bit in a bit more shade under um, this position here in the in the polytunnel and I'll just show you. They're here on this on this plant stand with my aloes and also my gasterias as well and they get plenty of light there and uh, sun but they're protected from all day um, full intense sun. So then how do you care for this awesome Hawarthia? Well first of all talk about the lighting. Now Hawarthia are very different to other types of succulent plants and cacti in the sense that although they like bright light they certainly can do a lot better in shade than other types of succulents can. In fact, in my experience, my Hawarthia do better in a more shady position. In other words, a position, they, they love a position that gets bright light and a bit of sun, even morning or late afternoon sun, but, um, but, not, but definitely protected from intense bright sunshine. So if you have these plants in a sunny south facing window because that's the only place you've got them we live in a climate where you have them in a greenhouse where it gets plenty of sun do give them some protection during the the midday because they do prefer shade as you can see with this one and we've had a very wet summer but we've still had plenty of light and, and sort of sunny spells in between this one takes on a bit of a reddish appearance when it gets plenty of sunlight so if you notice that your truncata goes very red this is a sign it's getting more than enough light and maybe you should give it a little bit more shade. Maybe put a curtain up, a neck curtain, if you have a south facing position and you want to, you need to give this, this Hawarthia some shade. And that's the same with all Hawarthias as well. I have mine in the, in the polytunnel and they're in a bit more of a sheltered position underneath the, the first rack on my um, shelf to give them a bit more shade away from the sun even here in Ireland they can still get too much sun once we get the sun out so shady position with a bit of either morning or late afternoon sun is ideal for these beauties now with the watering now I water mine from spring until sort of early fall and I give mine a good water every time the soil has totally dried out in the pots I won't, for example, this is still a bit damp because I watered this the other day and that's why I mentioned I'm not going to be repotting it just yet. I would wait until the soil is completely dried out before giving a bit of water again in spring and summer. And during the winter months, sort of from mid-September up until the beginning of April, I will keep this plant totally dry with no water at all in the winter time and the reason for that is because I overwinter mine in a, a greenhouse in, in my polytunnel and it gets cool in there during the winter months. I do have a heater which I keep to a minimum of 5 celsius 41 
Fahrenheit. But because it's still cool and chilly, I keep it totally dry. Now, bear in mind if you have your Hawarthia truncata indoors and you have it in the house, for example, and you have the heating on in the winter, you will still need to give, give yours a wee bit of water, probably once every four to six weeks. And that's just to stop them from shriveling out. And Hawarthia is also very prone to the roots dying back, which I'm going to talk about in a minute when I talk about repotting. So if you have these in a warm room in the winter time or on a, a window sill, obviously where it's getting sun and things like that, you will still have to give it just a light bit of water, just enough to stop the roots dying back and also the plant from shriveling too much. If you overwinter them in a in a greenhouse or or anywhere else where you overwinter, that's, that's low, you know, not much heat, for example, with me, then you want to keep them totally dry. But spring or summer, water every time the soil is totally dried out in their pots. Now fertilising, I fertilise the majority of my cacti and succulents with a weak strength tomato feed and I've made many videos on why I like to use tomato feed with my cacti and succulents so rather than going into too much detail in here I will link that video up above and down below in the video description. I personally find, it just, just tell you a little bit here, that tomato feed is high in potash um, potassium which helps to encourage more blooming and used at half the strength with roughly every fourth watering I give them in the spring or summer does help to encourage more blooms as I definitely find even with this Hawarthia truncata. So I would say when it comes to fertilising in spring and summer with every fourth watering you give your, your Hawarthia and you can use a normal standard cactus and succulent fertiliser if you want as well. Now with the soil it's really really important that you use a very well draining cactus and succulent soil and many people have their own special mixes for Hawarthia and that's because they have five sort of quite thick fleshy um, white roots and I've made um, a complete video on repotting Hawarthia, aloes and gasterias and I'm putting them all into that into that group because these are the succulent plants that do have fleshy roots and whenever I repot, no doubt I'll notice with this one when I repot this in a couple of weeks, a lot of the roots die back and this is normal, they just dry up, die back, go brown. I prune them back and there's always fresh roots coming. I leave them then unpotted for 24 to 48 hours before I pot up again, which I'll show you in, in the repotting video, should this also have the roots like that. But I have made a complete video on how to repot Hawarthia, Gasteria and Aloes. And do check that video out because I show an example of pruning back the roots and how to do it in that video. I'll also link that video up above and down below in the video description. And when it comes to repotting, always best spring and summer or early fall or very, very late winter, such as February, just before the spring is starting. But if you want to repot in the winter and you have this plant indoors and you're keeping it in dry soil or even in a greenhouse and you want to keep it dry, shouldn't be any problems there. The biggest problem is when you go to, to repot in winter and you're using damp soil and things like that. Spring, summer and early fall is always the best time in my opinion. And when I do repot, I always keep them dry for at least 10, 10 days to two weeks before I water again, even if I'm repotting them during the summer months. And when it comes to the soil, here, as I mentioned, a very well draining cactus and succulent soil. Now I like to make up my own mix and I use this also with my Hawarthias of three equal parts of a loam based soil, L-O-A-M, in this case I'm using John Innis number two, mixed with pumice or perlite, whichever, whichever you prefer. I prefer to use pumice. Perlite has a whole habit of floating up to the surface but I also know that pumice is not easy to get um, for many people now and it's extremely expensive. So you have to use what works well for you. Perlite works great too and also um, <clears throat> sharp horticultural sand roughly around three equal parts and this works well for all of my cacti and uh, well for the majority of my cacti succulents I do change the mix sometimes depending on the type of cactus or succulent that I'm repotting but if you want to know a basic um, soil recipe on how to make um, succulent soil then do check out a video I've made up above also on how to make succulent soil in three easy steps and this is a type of soil I also use for my Hawarthias and I'll also link that video down below in the video description too.
Now in the winter time, as I mentioned, um, if you're keeping this cool in a cool position, do keep it dry. And um, if it's indoors, give it a wee bit of water about every four to five to six weeks. But the, the minimum temperature these Hawarthias can take is about five Celsius, which is about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Ideally, in an ideal situation, they prefer to be around the eight to 10 Celsius, which is around the, the 48 to 50 degree Fahrenheit, because they are from South Africa in their native um, habitats. But they can certainly take five Celsius, 41 Fahrenheit, if they're kept totally dry in the winter. So no lower than that in the winter time. Now propagation is by seed or offset. Sometimes these will carry on growing. They sort of grow into a lovely mound, into a bowl. They're lovely if you can plant them into a lovely planter bowl because they'll keep on growing. As I say, they're small compact growers. They tend to spread more than grow high. And um, seed propagation is the best method. Um, you, I've heard of some growers that grow them from um, using a leaf, pulling one of these off and um, letting it dry and rooting it. I haven't tried that method myself, but I know it can be a bit hit and miss, but I'd recommend seed propagation as uh, the best method. And you should be able to get seeds of this awesome Hawarthia online on many different types of um, websites. It's the most common type of pest will be the, the most common one of cacti succulents, mealybugs. And you have to be very careful with this Hawarthia because mealybugs will definitely hide in between all of these segments here and you may not see them so do have a, a strong eye and use a magnifying loop um, to check for pests regularly on your plants. Uh, same with spider mites as well. If you see any signs of pests do treat with uh, neem oil, horticultural neem oil and also remove any you can, you can also see with rubbing alcohol as well. Now flowering, these Hawarthia truncatas will flower in the spring and summer and into the early fall. I've even known some of my Hawarthias even flower in the winter for me. They sort of flower when they want to and the flowers sort of come up on long sort of stems with little flowers at the end. I'm just going to show you an example of what they will look like on one of my other types of Hawarthias. Now these are my other Hawarthias in here and the flowers will look pretty much the same. They're, they're not really anything to dance about. They're very tiny little flowers, quite pretty in a way, the little green stripe going through them and I can't get too close because the macro is not brilliant. But just to show you roughly what the flowers look like, they sort of come up on long little, little stems and they're cute, as I say, from spring, summer and into the fall. No pruning, you don't need to worry about pruning these. However, they do, do um, give off these old dead leaves and what I like to use is these long handled um, tweezers. They're perfect just to get in and remove any dead leaves from these plants. And it's important that you do this because if you don't, you can get things like pests hiding underneath the dead leaves. So just gently remove them. A little bit like you'd be removing lithop skins, you know, give them a little gentle pull and it comes off there. And last but not least, it's um, not toxic to pets or young children if they were to chew on it. So you haven't got to worry about that. So it's a safe plant to have indoors if you have um, pets as well. So I hope you found them tips useful on how to grow and care for Hawarthia truncata, the horse's teeth. And do stay tuned for a video when I repot this, probably be a couple of weeks time now because it's just an awesome Hawarthia. And if you want to know, as I mentioned, on repotting Hawarthias in more detail, do check out the video link, as I mentioned, up above and down below in the video description. So thank you, Heidi and Mr. Cactus Channel for the video request. And I hope you love your Hawarthia truncata as much as I love mine. And if you haven't done already, don't forget to subscribe. Do click the notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon and do check out my website for lots of growing tips on there desertplantsofavalon.com. I want to wish you all an amazing plant powered day. Bye. Happy growing you all.